that, that's the answer. That's why you, you wasted 8,000 of public funds. So you would deny the people of Stanley Hall Ward the, their constitutional right to vote? It's, a, it's called democracy. Okay, can I make a response to that? We are not talking about uh, curbing democracy at all. Yes. Wait a minute, please, listen to you. We are not talking about curbing democracy here. We are talking about what is sensible. We are a, a cash-strapped council. Exactly as Councillor Marshall over there said, this had no meaning. The democratic vote showed that you were entirely wrong in calling this election because the way it, James's vote so much outclassed <coughs> that it was the democratic exercise showed that you were wrong in asking for the election. But may I say, we can carry on this discussion about democracy in the election at a later time, the council has a lot of serious things to discuss as well. Okay. Okay, we'll have a discussion sometime whenever it's convenient to for <clears throat> Any further announcement? Um, yes, Mr. Mayor. Um, just to remind everybody, please set your phones aside and switch them off. Um, we are filming the meeting, although we're not broadcasting it live. <coughs> and obviously I'm aware that someone else is filming the meeting. So remember the public is also filming the meeting. So please bear that in mind. Is anyone else recording the meeting? Please make yourself known if you are. Is that no? Okay. Um, also, I, I believe that there's a number of people here who've come in particular for item 12, which is the Louisa Morrison Memorial. Um, so, Mr. Mayor, it may be advisable if the Council consents to move that item up the agenda and deal with that after the meeting. I move that it is moved up just after the minute. Now, now, I'm asking for any public participation, anything the public needs to say about anything that is happening on the agenda today. There's two hands up there, three hands up. So we've got John Crawford, is that you, Billy? And gentleman over there, sorry. Simpson and Simpson. Okay. There's four people then, is it? Yeah. Jack Hare. Jack Hare. Jack Hare. Right. So there's four people. So oh, yeah. may I say that we allow 15 minutes for public participation. So I might have to curb you, each of you to about three minutes of speaking key so that you can hear all of you. May I ask the gentleman in the back, please? Yes, please. Good evening everybody, I'm John Caulfield, uh, part of the Road Safety Initiative in Stanley. Um, last meeting, that, that full Stanley Town Council meeting, I brought to the council about um, John Hollithorne who basically runs the um, Speedwatch Initiative in Stanley. And there was a bit of con controversy over him being attending a meeting which was for Projects and Initiative Committee on Tuesday the 18th of July. Um, when I come to the meeting, it was said to me and in, the, in this room that John was not actually invited to the meeting. I've got his email here and I've got copies for members saying that he was invited. And it says, Alan, sorry, it came from Nicola James. It says, hi, John. Alan, happy to, for you to attend the Projects and Initiative Committee meeting next, next Tuesday, the 18th of July. Now, I want to know why the town clerk said to me he wasn't invited to that meeting and he wasn't invited to speak at the meeting. Now, I don't appreciate the town clerk given misrepresentation to meetings when we've got evidence here that he was invited to speak. Okay, we'll vote, we'll vote, we'll vote. can I answer your question? Yeah. Yeah. What I said to you was that, that there wasn't time for John to do a 20 minute PowerPoint presentation. Quite happy for John to come to the meeting and we had other partners who came to the meeting and provided 
you know, some information, a piece of paper, a report, a brief update. John wanted to do a 20 minute presentation, which the chairman, who was Council of Palace, said we didn't have time for. Now that's what happened. And I, what? And I, and I resent being accused of misrepresenting anything. No. You've got an email that was sent to John from a third party, not me. I've got this You can come to the meeting. Yes, but it, meeting. it says on your word, happy for him to attend. Yes, and he did. I was. Yes, he, he did attend. But then, what, what? Alan, yeah, if you want to shake your head at me, we want to have this discussion. Why we go elsewhere? But I am not having. John, I am not please. having you. John has asked you to meet him. John, hang on. Please. As the town as clerk has said, we were perfectly happy for him attending the meeting. So why, why did Mr. Wait, wait, wait a sec, for God's sake, wait a sec. What we couldn't have without something being put on the agenda, without a space being put on the agenda for a 20 minute PowerPoint a presentation, which is what he wanted to do, we said that we couldn't do that without due notice. So we couldn't put in a 20 minute PowerPoint presentation in the middle of an agenda which had, was not ready to cope for that. And that's why he was refused to a, a, a chance to speak. He could have spoken. No one would have stopped him from speaking, exactly as some of the other people who participated did. But we couldn't put aside a 20-minute presentation. Then he would have to t come and tell us he wants to give us a specific <coughs> presentation of 20 minutes, exactly as anyone else who comes and participates over here does. And we would have been perfectly happy accommodating him. And that's our response to what you have to say. Well, I don't, I didn't write the... That's fine, that's a problem that has to be taken outside. The council has dealt with it, and it, if he wants to give a presentation, then we are perfectly happy listening to a presentation from him, which the, the agenda will cope with. Without that being put on the agenda at the 20 minutes, if it is two minutes or three minutes, we could have accepted it, but not 20 minutes. But what, what, what I'm bringing back, what I'm bringing back today is why did Mr. Shaw say in the last meeting that he wasn't invited. Well, I've got the evidence here. Now, I had to go away and ask John for this evidence before I could reply to you, Alan. Well, John, will you calm down, please? Well, first, one, one thing. The first thing is, you know who I am, you know where I work, you know my telephone number, you know my email address. Why have you waited between one full council meeting and the next? Why didn't you just send an email or phone me up and have a conversation with me? I don't understand. Because this needs because to be... you want to understand in the council meeting. And, and the fact is that I didn't mislead anybody, John. What I said was we didn't have time for John's presentation to do. I never said well, he couldn't come. I'm point of order, Mayor. I'm the point of order. We've had the question. He's not going to accept the answer. And I suggest that the clerk gives a written response to the question that's been asked and that we move on to the next question. Because the number of people indicate they want to speak. And I think we should give everybody a chance. Otherwise, we'll run out of time. Mr. Nixon. Thank you, Chair. Before I start, are you, are you going to do an email from Ron? I dealt with the email from Ron today. You emailed me and I emailed him back. You emailed me again and I emailed him back. So it wasn't going to know because I've obviously. That's for me to present it if you don't. Yeah. Just thought I'd let you know. Um, right. I would like to talk on item 12 of the agenda, the Louisa Memorial, uh, Louisa, Louisa Morrison Memorial. To my knowledge, as I was in the audience, this item was discussed at an earlier full council meeting. And it was decided and passed by full council that the original memorial stone would remain an ampere plate. I would like to know who came to the clerk with this compromise solution, when in fact no solution was needed as it was finalised earlier. Whoever approached the clerk should have been informed that the decision had already been reached democratically voted on and passed. The clerk could then have had a different conversation about erecting a copy by the Louisa. Could the clerk tell me who gave me permission to have further discussion with the other parties when it was already passed by council? And did he, in these discussions, include the Anfield Plain councillors? If there is a feeling for a copy to be erected, then let the original remain in the area and place the copy in the other location mentioned. May I also say that this item should not be on the agenda, as per standing orders, once voted and passed, a motion cannot be overturned for six months, and if councillors wish to do it earlier, then by the rules, 11 names should be sought and published, and then it be put on the next council agenda. 
Last week on the Stanley Chat site, a gentleman asked why the barrier was still up around the grassed area by the Louisa. It was answered by another gentleman. It's for, the, it's for and I quote, memorial for Pips. So it seems to some, this already has been signed, sealed and delivered. I feel that a small group of on this snub the people of Anfield Plain, the church elders, and they have already had local meetings with residents, church and connected families, all saying that it should remain in the local area. A decision has been made at Four Council for it to remain in Anfield Plain, which it seems is now about to be reneged on. If this, if this is, it isn't an insult to Anfield Plain, then I don't know what is. I know the local partnership leaders and committees, New York, New, New York, New Cairo, Anfield Plain and Catchgate are discussing to see this on the agenda again. And all say, if, this, if, if they want a copy, then it should go to Louisa. I would be interested to hear what each of the Anfield Plain and Catchgate area councillors make of this. And I'll read this letter to the end of the agenda. Okay, Billy. Um, yeah. Firstly, I've heard Gary Pitts of so can I just respond to, just want to respond to, to the Billy um, First thing, Billy, I don't need permission to speak to people in the community, mate. Sorry, you, you, you're saying who, who can you get permission from to talk to people about this tomorrow? I can talk to anybody, that's my job. Um, second thing is, you're quite right about the standard orders and about the six months rule. Um, the two exceptions are, as you probably already know, because you were a sober councillor, is 7.1. A resolution shall not be reversed within six months except by a special motion which requires no written notice by these 11 councillors to be given to the proper officer or by a motion moved to pursuance of a recommendation of the committee. So the two ways for something to come back on the agenda is it goes to a committee and gets a recommendation or I get a signed motion for the 11 members and that's got 12 signatures on it. So I've accepted that motion. So why is it back on the agenda? Because I've been asked to put it back on the agenda by a motion signed by 12 members of council. That's why it's back on the agenda. Who has proposed a compromise? Well, the compromise has been discussed by a number of people. I'm just reporting what I've been told. I've not discussed it. Um, so, you know, the item is on, it's on the agenda for discussion, and I imagine there will be a full and frank discussion when it's dealt with. May I reply back to you on? Uh, just for a second. Chairman, no, no, that's, I, that's not the procedure. You can ask a question, you get an answer, and then that's it. Can you, can you, and it, you it's it now the 15 you, minutes. No, no, no. no. Yeah, yeah. Finished, and I think we should allow members, all the members of the There's a couple of things that's concerning me. We've had two people <coughs> turn up at a council meeting here and make accusations, serious accusations, about our head of paid service. And it's absolutely disgusting. Excuse me, what's turn up here in a public forum chair, Excuse me, what's the accusation? In a public Excuse meeting, me, that's some piece in the this is a, this so is a political I'll, body. Point of order, chair. Why? Point of order, chair. I'm being accused of something. I would like to Sorry, I'd like to Mr. Mr. Mayor, that. if this gentleman Listen. won't shut up, then there's only one option that you'll have. Yeah. And, and I'll move it. that motion if you're not careful. Yeah. He's asking his question now, you must remain quiet. Why I'm being accused of something. Please. Please. So, sorry, Chair, so I'm, I'm concerned here that our head of paid services is getting the public dressing down for things based on nothing more, Billy, than he is seeing and tittle tattle in my mind. So I think we need to move on from that, but we need to be mindful that what people see, see in here is an accusation not just against our head of paid service, but against this council, and this council has the right to take legal action to protect our head of state staff, right? So I want that admitted, and that's a fact. And I want my admitted Secondly, second yes. yeah, sorry, if I may, I just want to, to make the point that any decision that we take as politicians in here, I think we would all agree, needs to be the right decision. It needs to be the right decision by our communities and the people who've elected us. So for me, if we've had an opportunity to take on board views and opinions, and we're going to get onto this discussion in a minute, and everyone in the room around this table who's been elected will get a chance to have their say it. But as part of any consultation, there's nobody more important with this than the families who were affected by the mining disaster. And for me, we'll move on to that discussion, but they are integral to where the final resting place of that memorial here, here. Please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. May I ask the person in the corner there to speak, please? Okay. Um, 
all I can say is um, our very short time, there was, the church demanded that there was a public consultation where the memorial should go. And the members of our group, the families and the committee and those that put the memorial there, turned up at the meeting. There was three motions, one from a gentleman to put next to the general garage at Anfield Plain, which received no support. The second was to put an unfair plane by another gentleman, and this also received no support. The third, put by the, our group for the memorial to come back to Stanley, where it should have been in the first place, and got overwhelming support, and the result was the church council handed it to the AAP for the memorial to come back to Stanley. Having waited several months for the AAP, to come up with what was happening, he then handed it back to the town council who had a meeting. And all this time, we were in the impression the memorial was come to stand. Three quick points. All the men in that disaster were employed by the Louisa Colliery. The second point, all the men killed and injured in that disaster were in the Louisa Miners Lodge. The third thing was, the reason, the only reason I took the memorial to Anfield Plain in 1997 was the 50th anniversary. There was only a few widows left alive. There was a rush to get the memorial in place at the suggestion of a friend of mine, Wilkie Burley. Now we took this on board, we went to the local councillors, and they all told us we would never get planning permission in time for the 50th anniversary. So in desperation, I hunted round and I found a man at Anfield Plain, the vicar of St. James Church, who 100% backed it. And I may tell you, all we got from him and his church members was total cooperation. All we've had since then is total conflict. And I'd like to remind the committee, I don't think this is a political football. This is a personal thing for the families and the friends that were killed. Yeah. Yeah. And I would ask yeah. you to give it due respect and return the, <coughs> the Louisa Memorial onto a site of the Louisa at the earliest possible date. Yeah. This is the 70th anniversary this year. I was informed by the AFP we were aiming for the 23rd of August this year. It's long past and gone, and I only found out two days before the 23rd of August, that he had been here to pass it for Port Anfield Plain, which none of us had been consulted. The church still insists Thank that you, this Jack. memorial was only placed with the consultation of the local people. Thank you. Uh, can I just say, uh, my father was one of the victims, by the way, at 47. And uh, I would like to use the analogy of the people who were buried in uh, the fields of France. Uh, the reason they're buried there is purely economics. To fetch so many people back was totally uneconomic. It would be, it would be, the wishes of all the people around them, like myself, for these people to be buried in the place they were born. So I'll get off that subject, and it's not a matter of Anfield Plain versus Stanley. Here, here. It's purely a matter of the men involved who died in the disaster. Now, the, ma the biggest majority, democracy was mentioned here, and people being offended. What I would like to say, from a democratic point of view, of the dead men who can't come here and speak, these men, the ma biggest majority, belonged at Stanley. Yeah. And they, like was already said, belonged to the Stanley Lodge. In my particular case, he lived in Stanley, but not just on a singular of my father, but of the biggest majority of the people lived in Stanley and worked for the Louisa Colliery. Circumstances <coughs> being what they were, as just been explained, it ended up at Anfield Plain for a short-term solution, and it ended up much longer, but that's politics for you. I would like the men who can't speak all I'm saying is the, the biggest majority belonged in Stanley. They worked in the Stanley pit, the Louisa. They used the Anfield plane shaft as a matter of convenience because it was a shorter route to where they worked. That is all. 
and I respect it. It's not a matter of offending people in Alfie Plain. It's a matter of respecting the wishes of the people who were Thank you. deceased. Thank you. Thank you. Was there a hand up over there? Yes, please. You've got over two minutes. You need to keep it very That's fine. I'll keep it strictly to the point. Um, I am the vice chair of the Catchgate and Anfield Game Partnership. I have the chair here with me. We have spoken to so many people in Catchgate and Anfield Claim and another local historian who has told us that the majority of the people down the mine came from New Cairo, Anfield Plain, Catchgate, and Tanfield Lee. Now, if that doesn't give these people the right to keep their thing, then why on earth? And it wasn't a short term solution either. It was there because nobody else wanted it. Thank we you. want it, so we would like to keep it. Thank you. Thank you. So, was that part of the uh, meeting? And I'll go on to item 5, which is confirmation of council minutes. To approve of the current record and sign the minister of the 27th of July 2017, the Library Council meeting. This is on attachment A. Does anyone move it? Second it, please. Second it, please. That's great. Uh, Mr. Mayor, there is an error on the agenda. I apologise. It. it says that the minutes of 27 are about 26, but the minutes themselves are correct. Okay. My mistake, the minutes of July. My mistake, <laughs> you don't want to understand that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank I'm sorry to disturb you. Can I pull yours back so he can take his wheelchair out there? Because he can't. He's just asked me to bring it back, but it's obviously yours this one. Oh, I can't. Is there not room in the front? Mm -hmm. Mary and Tilly, can I ask you to move so that Joe can come Public and consider the available historical information on standing mine disaster 
We'd love a decision taken at the full council on the 25th of July to be reviewed. Uh, and on the agenda, the background information I'll put there for members is that um, <coughs> there are obviously in the community strong feelings and reasons for the placing of the memorial both at an alternative location and for the plain and in Stanley and former fithead where the men descended. A compromise solution has been proposed whereby the original stone will be relocated to Stanley in the area between the Civic Hall and the Louisa Centre. And a new stone, more stylistically in keeping with the adjacent War Memorial setting, will be placed in Anfield Plain Park. Members of the public, the relatives of the men, have indicated they will make a financial contribution to the town council to assist in this. Officers are in special DCC about the local licenses and consent which will be required to place and maintain two stones and with the AAP about further potential funding for contribution. So I have I have had a discussion with Dan O'Brien from the AAP about this. Um, I didn't ask for permission, sorry. Um, but essentially, when, as you all know, this has been going on now for a long time, um, when it originally came to the town council um, to consider when the memorial, when, when it was announced that it was being closed, the town council then took a look at it and said that they would prefer and would paint the location. Subsequently, it then was, as I think Jack said, the AAP kind of took ownership of it for a while and they had begun making inquiries about putting it out there. Um, and then it was subsequent to that, just prior to the May elections, that the diocese wrote to the town council and asked the town council if we would get involved in relocating it, which council agreed that we would just before the election in May. Um, and the position we were in following the July meeting was that I had made some initial inquiries to DCC concerning the license in Anfield Plain. Um, so where we are now is that I've made some inquiries about the license for Anfield Plain. Dan O'Brien has obviously got the contacts about the location of Stanley. Um, we haven't moved any further than that because we're obviously awaiting the outcome of this discussion. Mr. Mayor. Anyone ready to Mr. Mayor, as the uh, move of the motion, we took a decision following the discussion and it came to light that we didn't have all the information that was available and some of it was a bit flawed because nobody had spoken to the relatives. That was a big problem and we took a decision not knowing what their feelings are. Uh, and we didn't also take into account a report that was done by Jack Hare on the Louisa Corrie Disaster Memorial. Now, Jack not only does that, we also wrote a book called Call of the Blood. It tells you all about the disaster, it tells you all about the different ones that's happened round about. So, nobody's challenged that book, nobody's challenged this report, but we didn't have the right kind of information and we took a, a decision that I'm sorry but it was flawed uh, and so what we need to do is to recognise what what the people, the relatives of the families want and what they want is to be brought to the Louisa where all the, as Jack Air said, the main is one part of the way, although it's the road, I'm not going to go over that again. They, they all worked and went down from this area, that they were brought out in other areas to the matter. And I think it's important that we don't, we're making this a political football, and it shouldn't be.